thank you, Dr. Ram Mohan, for the uh, you know very kind invitation to take part in this symposium, and everyone from the Endocrine Society, all the the, the leadership of the Endocrine Society who have um, you know spoken today and such encouraging words. And I want to thank Rakesh for calling me a young stalwart, if that's what you meant. But I uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I'll take the young part, uh, not the stronger part. So um, the talk that has been given to me is obesity in the girl child. And I really think it's um, uh, a brilliant move to uh, include such a topic because um, when it comes to um, you know obesity, we never take that gendered approach to uh, either uh, looking at consequences or uh, what do we do for prevention or or even evaluation, keeping the life cycle um, and unique challenges um, that a girl child might face, and also what kind of um, transgenerational and multi-generational uh, impact that one overweight child might have. So I'll start with the clinical scenario of a girl, Anya. This is not her name, but um, uh, I just use that name, but it's a real patient. Um, scope of the problem, how do we define obesity and, and assess it, and some the new narrative on uh, etiology and appetite control, and of course, most importantly, um, consequences of um, you know, obesity in a girl child, um, evaluation, management, and of course, uh, future of Anya. So she is a 12-year-old girl who was referred to me for evaluation of abnormal thyroid function tests. And that was done because she had gained 11 kilos over nine months. So I saw her sometime, um, I think in um, August of last year. So a few months of the pandemic was there, but prior to that, she had started the weight gain even prior to that, I think towards the end of um, 2019. She was born 3.1 kilos, has no, had no significant childhood illness except treatment for dengue fever at nine years. No other complaints except for feeling more sleepy for the past three to four months, and she has not yet attained menarche. And she was seen by her pediatrician, and some baseline tests were done. <clears throat> the TSH was 7.2, which is why the pediatrician referred her to me. Fasting sugar was 92, and you can see the lipids are clearly off for a child who's just 12 years old, and the vitamin B, like everyone else, was low. So the additional information and tests we probably need from any child that we are evaluating for obesity, particularly a girl child would be her birth weight, um, height, blood pressure, tanner staging, family history of obesity and other conditions, her medication history, especially medication like for seizure disorders or mental health illness. Um, and then mental health history itself, maternal health history, and maternal health history includes gestational diabetes, maternal obesity, preeclampsia during pregnancy, and a complete physical examination. And some basic tests like, um, or in addition to what has already been done, uh, we would probably look at a two hour post 75 gram glucose or liver function test. And then in, in uh, targeted situations, we would be ruling out Cushing's and ruling out some hypothalamo pituitary causes um, and then looking for uh, probably syndromic causes. Very important to identify uh, feeding and eating patterns in, in children who present to us with obesity. So <clears throat> in Anya's case, you can see her birth weight was 3.1 kilo. Um, she was 50th centile for height. So here is something I just want to point out that typically overweight children are tall, for, you know, tall children as well. So anytime we see a, um, a short overweight child, um, some red flag should go up in our head. And then her tanner staging breast was two, uh, pubic hair was uh, one, family history, parents are not obese um, and really otherwise completely normal, including her um, glucose test was normal as well. So now we are you know, brought into that quandary, should have been now be chasing all kinds of zebras like Cushing's or hypothalamo pituitary causes or rarer syndromes, though she has no clinical evidence of any 
dysmorphic form of obesity. And then the feeding patterns, of course, she was eating a lot of snacks. So this is her background. I'll come back to you at the very end and tell you what she had. So defining obesity typically is establishing, measuring the height, measuring the weight, using a growth chart, both for height and weight, and also calculating the BMI. Um, so now we have the, the BMI centiles for children. More than 95th is considered obese and um, between 85th and 95th uh, as overweight. So a couple of important pointers about this um, growth chart and growth curves in, um, in children, especially we need to have sex specific growth charts. And then when we plot the, um, the growth, the height and the weight, it really gives us a lot of information about, is this a pattern from infancy? Is it something that, that happened um, later? Like you, you see in, in, in this particular child who was later diagnosed with Cushing, not Anya, this is uh, another child. You can see how the height started dipping down, but the weight started going up. So very typically many endocrine issues, this kind of thing happens even in you know, growth hormone deficiency um, or Cushing syndrome, you start seeing these kind of problems. So really important to look at the two together and, and see how they are going to, um, they're working together. Now the scope of the problem is, as you can see, um, India should never be really in this kind of color, which is 18 to 23.9%, but that's really where we are. And also because of the, Asian cutoffs for BMIs and, 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 and if you use the BMI cutoffs for children. But this data from India, which is a, a systematic review, as, and, and it's all over the country, not too much of data actually for the Northeast, which is a, uh, actually one of the uh, negative things about this one. This, this looked at multiple studies and, and they plotted this graph. And so you can see this wide, um, you know, distribution. If you look at Chennai, anywhere from 0.6 to 11.6%. Again, depending on what cutoffs they use, um, you know, which uh, part of Chennai they, they did and, and, you know, how did they select the population. And, and this is true across the country. But um, having said that, we all know that um, childhood obesity is on the rise. Um, overweight is on significant rise. Obesity on the right, extreme obesity or severe obesity is also on the rise, which has very specific um, complications. So when you look at girls and boys, one of the things that emerges is typically girls start gaining more weight um, around the pre-pubertal, pubertal and post-pubertal years. Is this something biologic? Is it something to do with an emphasis on academics? Is it something to not letting the girl child after her menarche or around the time, not letting her out to go and play? Um, multiple factors come into play here. When it comes to etiology of childhood obesity, the simple stuff, the environmental factors like sleep duration, high screen time, lack of physical activity, poor quality nutrition. I think that's the biggest part of um, uh, the causes of childhood obesity. And then, of course, there are lots of maternal factors, maternal obesity, to severe preeclampsia, uh, cesarean section, and I'll come to this in a minute. And this has something to do with the gut microbiome of you know early infancy gut microbiome, uh, genetics, and of course, parental obesity and education. So some rarer causes, um, gut microbiome, they've shown use of antibiotics early in infancy and C-section. Toxins like the uh, bisphenol and DDT, uh, the endocrine disruptors, certain viruses um, have been associated, uh, or at least that there has been uh, some uh, uh, association with viral infection and in future obesity, preeclampsia, as I mentioned, and polygenic factors, which we are aware of. Some uh, monogenic obesity, like the melanocotin 4 receptor defect and then leptin deficiency defects. And just want to just mention this rare cause of hypothalamic obesity, a rapid onset obesity, hypothalamic dysfunction, hypoventilation, and autonomic dysregulation, and also may be associated with neuroendocrine tumors. 
So this is something very interesting when it comes to girls and obesity. Earlier mother's age at menarche predicts rapid infancy growth. And so when she has obesity, the girl again can have earlier menarche. There's some debate on that, but some people believe that overweight children um, have earlier menarche. And in which case, this is going to become you know, a constant ongoing cycle. Mother's earlier menarche, child has obesity, then child has earlier menarche, and her child has um, you know, obesity. So this is why it is so important um, you know, to look at a girl child in this context of maternal health, her health, and the, her future uh, offspring health. So we always had this very simplistic understanding of the etiology and pathogenesis of obesity. The, you know, you eat more or and you exercise less or you're less physically active. So it's the balance between eating and physical activity and an oversimplified approach to of thinking about um, obesity. But the new narrative is completely different, which is there's an obesogenic environment and the genetic susceptibility and a whole lot of factors, as you can see in this, contributes to um, increase in weight, especially in women girls, uh, young women, and, and as women get older, this is the real reason why obesity is such a major problem for women. Two additional things, um, which I think are becoming more and more relevant are air pollution, maternal smoking and secondhand smoking, and also the built environment. The enabling environment is so important. Characteristics of high built environment like population density. Also, Obesity rates for girls are higher in lower socioeconomic circumstances. You know, just um, intuitively, it doesn't make sense, but it is the truth. And rates for children based on parental education, you can see that the uh, children who are born to parents with lower education seem to have higher amount of uh, obesity. So the social determinants of health become very important, um, whether it is health and healthcare, uh, what we provide, the social and community context, neighborhood and built environment, as I already mentioned, and education. And we all know that girls, um, the, the literacy rate is lower in girls and economic stability. All of this has been disrupted in a major way by COVID and the pandemic. So our job is actually going to be bigger and, and needs to have uh, more uh, involvement by policy and endocrine society and others. And our own uh, knowledge of the biology of food intake and body weight regulation has improved. I just want to show this, the fat, gut, and the brain talk to each other to regulate body weight. The body defends its highest fat mass. I, I, it's put down there three times for a reason. So once fat mass is gained, very difficult to reduce it. And the body will fight tooth and nail to bring us back to that weight. So you know, changes will happen with appetite, changes will happen with ghrelin, changes will happen with metabolism, or the body will fight to defend its highest fat mass. So really important to take a, a very detailed diet history, a very detailed activity history, especially screen time. So we can counsel the patients on that. So TV watching and childhood obesity the reasons we are not only its displacement of physical activity, there's an actual depression of metabolic rate when they're sitting doing nothing and adverse effects on diet quality and effects of television on sleep itself. Some, I mean, of course, food prompted by commercials. So this is the most, the crux of the talk, the consequences. For children, there is a huge emotional and behavioral thing. There's stigmatization, bullying, low self-esteem. There may be issues with school and school performance, absence from school, and partly for health reasons and partly because of the emotional and behavioral illness. And then, of course, we know about the high blood pressure, pre-diabetes, diabetes, um, the you know, bone and joint problems, slip capital, femoral epiphysis, uh, Blount syndrome, uh, high cholesterol, asthma, sleep apnea, and then most importantly, children track on the weight, so increased risk of becoming overweight adults and risk of ill health and premature mortality. And imagine what will happen if a girl becomes a, a young woman who is overweight. She'll walk into her pregnancy like that 
and develop gestational diabetes. And I'll show you what happens. So there's already, you can see this study, the CAR study showed that young people where the dotted lines are, um, is pre-diabetes and girls. Girls have more pre-diabetes. Nearly 35% of them have pre-diabetes in Chennai. It's, um, and, and more than that in Delhi. This is um, you know, really disturbing news. Um, and also, um, if the BMI percentile at entry into kindergarten is, is, can you see the probability of obesity in eighth grade? So this is the tracking phenomenon that I talked about, and this will happen as they enter childhood. But girls also have a major mental health issue. They undergo stress, there's increased domestic violence, sexual abuse, because there's an earlier sexual debut. There may be uh, you know, development of breasts earlier um, and depression because of their physical appearance, body shaming that goes on, and along with that, therefore depression, body image issues, um, eating disorders happen because of that. And then I already mentioned how the social determinants play into all of these things. And the future of Anya will look like this. I, I mentioned to you what happened. Anya is a 12 year old girl. And this is what will happen to her if we don't do anything or if she doesn't do anything. And she'll enter a pregnancy. She will have gestational diabetes and her daughter will also, you know, if she has an infant, will also be predisposed to a diabetes and gestational diabetes and obesity. And then this cycle will keep going on. Largely also now because of the whole metabolic programming, which is very, very significant when girls have, when girls are overweight, because they are, they have this important responsibility of going on to becoming mothers. And so therefore it is, their health is very important. And as you can see in the top left panel, mothers with gestational diabetes, their offspring can develop high risk of pre-diabetes and diabetes. The bottom panel, left panel, risk of overweight and abdominal obesity at age 16 in prenatal exposure to maternal pre-pregnancy overweight and gestational diabetes. And then gestational diabetes can recur in subsequent pregnancies and more recently, we know, increased risk of cardiovascular disease. So this is a very interesting slide I saw and I took it because this is a young girl who goes to nursing school. She's 140 pounds, by the way, this is pounds. Then she gains weight after going to school, then she goes on a diet, comes down, then she starts working nights, weight goes up, she gets married, goes on an Atkins diet, weight goes down, gets pregnant, it goes up, and then it goes up, marriage troubles, emotional eating. Can you see she has ballooned to over 100 kilos just in a matter of 20 years. And this is a, a life cycle of women that we must keep in mind that they will go through pregnancies and they may go through you know, troubles in their relationships. So when it comes to managing um, uh, obesity in, um, in, in children, basically, but I'll just uh, address girls. Patients ages two to 18, presence for office visit. You measure the height and weight, calculate BMI, plot it on the uh, medical growth chart. And if they have normal BMI, reinforcement, face the child and family, normal BMI that is increasing provide patient education, self-help materials. 85th to 95th, which is overweight, patient education, self-help material. But we need to follow up these children and keep reinforcing. And then of course, once they've gone into the obese part, we start evaluating them. And I would actually move the evaluation even to the overweight child so that we are, you know, we are able to pick up things early. Measuring for CVD risk is very, very important. And I think between nine and 11, the recommendation is all children should undergo a lipid screening once during this age. And then 12 to 16, obviously, if they have not, if we have not identified anything, we really need to look at this. And of course, um, risk factors for developing atherosclerosis and early CVD, because we know heart disease is the biggest killer of women. We need to take a very gendered approach because early menarche can happen. Early appearance of breast can happen. Polycystic ovary syndrome can be unmasked. Um, body image issues can happen. And preconception care 
addressing this is very important because we know in our country girls can get married not anymore legally till 21 but any time after 15 and the high risk of gestational diabetes postpartum weight gain and adult chronic disease so this is a, a lovely um, um, guideline from up to date which i really like which talks about how we would take if depending on the a stage of obesity they are in and, and going through this um, the, these guidelines primarily good nutrition restricting television and behavior intervention but most importantly the, the parents and the rest of the family also have to lead by example and, and be active and be you know eat healthy and then um, a comprehensive comprehensive multidisciplinary intervention will happen if they uh, obviously as the uh, the degree of obesity goes up and we probably will have to do um, you know weekly patient provider contact either by telemedicine or by phone and then increase structure and accountability and then tertiary care intervention when they start coming to the uh, specialist a multidisciplinary approach and for the very obese patients um, uh, very low calorie diets or highly structured diets bariatric surgery and really medications I think um, we have to uh, hold as much as possible uh, from anyone or so this is one that I missed which is um, structured weight management if they are in uh, stage two so a lot of healthy eating physical activity but a program that they can be part of so that um, you know we cannot just give a diet sheet and um, so as this shows one size doesn't fit all so it has to be individualized sustainable affordable and evidence-based um, only then it will even work and the, the healthy eating part is i cannot stress it enough a lot of time has to be spent by the dietitian physical activity um, so the entire family has to be involved and something that the child will enjoy not a 5 a.m walk um, and good sleep and the connection between sleep and overweight cannot be uh, stressed enough interest in non-academic activities so that the child is not just sitting down and reading this is very relevant to girls and uh, and what can, whatever we can do about air pollution and endocrine disruptors as family and as a society we should do and the built environment with energy i just want to end my talk by saying that we are moving into this era of digital medicine there's a new concept called digital vaccines so uh, a, a colleague and friend from the us um, bhagav shri prakash and their team um, they have developed this app it's called fuya it's about uh, food and what children can learn through the its gamification of whatever i'm talking about so they've done a lot of work on this it's called fuya they've done it on childhood obesity um, we are now going to implement it at vhs uh, on type 1 and type 2 diabetes in children so this may be um, you know uh, a, a way of the future just to give you a little idea of how they teach the children um, we need to gamify things for them and not be you know uh, sterile and boring and and talk about heart disease that will happen to them um, 40 years later that will not resonate with them so an infographic something like this this is for the eu but i think we need to make things like this and put it out in all the doctors offices give it to parents so that they can look at pictorially what they can do more exercise healthy habits to children cheap healthy food education about eating um, exercise friendly urban planning because when it comes to especially girls and um, obesity the psychological aspect is very important we cannot underscore that and um, which will lead to eating disorders and many other complications in the future um, this is my last slide i just want to say when it comes to a girl and obesity we have to start with the mom and continue throughout life make sure we optimize birth weight make sure we you know um, counsel the mother about healthy eating about the first 1000 days um, breastfeeding breastfed babies are less overweight than bottle fed babies so exclusive breastfeeding for 6 months complementary breastfeeding for at least another year so breastfeeding 
physical activity. And once the child is a toddler, a lot of playing and less screen time. And uh, this has to continue throughout and less focus on academics, more focus on physical activity. And always keeping in mind that the, the girl is the one who is going to determine the health of the future generations. Thank you so much.